Chattanooga, Tennessee, remains to be the birthplace of the 12 tribes communities, a group that consists of roughly 2,500 and 3,000 members worldwide as it continues to grow to this day. The group was founded in 1972 by Albert James Spriggs with intentions to recreate what the first century church used to be, which is described in the book of Acts. And with this recreation of the first church, the 12 tribes also believe that all other Christian-based religions have fallen off and that it's up to them to be the one true reminder to the world on how church needs to be run. The 12 tribes' original members were actually a teenager's ministry in the 1970s and most members attended the First Presbyterian Church or other churches of their choosing. Over time, members would create friction and uncomfortable situations amongst these churches. They would express their own beliefs and critique the other churches on what they believed to be wrong and too mainstream. Finally, the 12 tribes and its members would break away from the mainstream church and begin their own, with services being held in Warner Park and Chattanooga. These services that were held were called critical mass. After the split from the main church, the 12 tribes would begin to plant churches in Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee around this time. With each of these churches came their own retail sandwich shop, the Yellow Deli. The sandwich shops are still around today, and according to the Yellow Deli website, there are currently 30 locations worldwide. These shops are what help fund and maintain their current locations for worship. So why have the 12 tribes gained the title of cult? Well, many of the group's teachings have been categorized as racist, homophobic, and misogynistic by groups that actually help find and put an end to cults on the rise and also by some governments. Children are also born and raised within the cult who have horror stories of their own. Children were known to receive beatings to the point of bleeding and bruising. These would occur daily, and some even fainted from the pain. These children that have told their stories are obviously escaped stories of victims from within the cult. And these stories revolve around child abuse and child rearing. The abuse was so bad that there is now a generation of adults who are once children within the 12 tribes. These adults are weary and anxious about the new generation of children that are currently being raised within the cult. The escapees speak of their will being broken by the adults of the 12 tribes and that the children from within the compounds were supposed to be quiet and when they weren't physical restraint over their bodies and mouths was expected. Jason Wolf, the next member. Members that threatened to abandon the cult were reminded by their leaders that if they left, God would punish them for it. In the 80s, the group ran into some financial trouble while also being in the process of moving their operations to Vermont. In Vermont, they would find some more hardship. They would experience a raid resulting in 112 children being seized and charges being made toward multiple members in the cult. Eventually, the case would be dropped due to the witness recanting their statement. Pretty much from the late 80s to current day, the cult has thrived and has grown in numbers. Today, there are countless compounds that are public and also accept like-minded people. Their website shows all locations around the world and as well as their cafes and restaurants that are operational. In 2021, the founder, Albert Springs, passed away, leaving behind his questionable legacy Nevertheless, their group is still active today and operate out of numbers, compounds, and companies. While the tribe continues to receive scrutiny for their wrongdoings, they still continue to grow and receive new tribe members. There is loss that I did not touch on this, so maybe in the future I'll do a full video on their history because it gets even crazier. The Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or FL. DS for short, originates from the original faith of the Mormons, also called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Although the Mormons abolished polygamy, the custom of permitting men to marry multiple women in 1890, a core group of fundamentalists branched off in the 1930s and established themselves in Short Creek, alternatively referred to as Colorado City, Arizona. While their group practiced polygamy, believing it brought them closer to God, 
Women wore identical long dresses and adhered to strict prayer schedules. Members were isolated from the outside world with disobedience leading to excommunication. This included harsh consequences such as children being separated from their mothers and young people being abandoned without support or understanding of the outside world. Soon enough, their self-proclaimed prophet would make his way into the picture in 2002, Warren Jeffs. And as a side note, Warren has actually taken the place of his father, who passes away in 2002. Warren, believe it or not, he isn't going to be the best of leaders to his followers. Nevertheless, they follow his teachings wholeheartedly, and like his father, Rulon Jeffs, Warren would practice polygamy at any chance he got, resulting in 78 wives, 14 of which were underage, and more than 60 children. Warren was a busy man. Warren would eventually make his way onto the FBI's most wanted. Word about child abuse and incest got around, and Warren would swiftly be on the run. He would eventually be arrested about a year into him fleeing from the feds. He was arrested in Las Vegas during a routine traffic stop in 2006 for his temporary license plate not being visible. Warren would receive life in prison plus 20 years as his sentence. Eventually, the FODS compound in Texas, known as the Urinane for Zion Ranch, would be searched and raided in 2008. This 1,700-acre property held almost 700 people, with 400 children being rescued, making it the biggest child custody case in America's history. The state of Texas would eventually seize the compound in 2013 after the leaders of the FLDS still stood by Warren's side and continued to take his advice. It seemed that meanwhile, Warren still stood in prison. He still had enough pull with his followers to call shots and make decisions for the FLDS while still being incarcerated. To this day, the FLDS currently has around 6,000 and 10,000 members worldwide. The compound in Texas has been disbanded and now stands as military training grounds, but this hasn't stopped members from moving to other states like North Dakota and other times to continue their practices. Warren is still well in contact with his members and keeps everyone informed on the things he needs done. As of today, his son, Hellman Jeffs, runs the organization and also helps manage Zoom meetings with his father making this yet another cult that is still active and continues to recruit as they wait for their arrival of their prophetic leader. I'd also like to mention to you guys that Peter Santillo did a Darkie series style video on the FLDS and I'll leave the link in the description. Shoko Asahara, the founder and leader of the Japanese doomsday cult known as Aum Shinriko would soon trek the attention of the rich and elite towards his New Age religion in 1987. A religion that taught a mix of teachings from multiple other religions, like Christianity, Hindu, and Buddhism. At the peak of Aum Shinriko, their memberships were believed to be around 20 and 40,000 members worldwide. Eventually, Shoku would soon implement his ideas and plans for world domination, starting with Japan. The cult would try tactics that seemed almost movie-like, and one of these tactics were to try and spread an anthrax epidemic in 1993. Shoko would orchestrate his elite followers to donate and provide the resources needed for such a heavy task. But fortunately, the epidemic would fail. This would have stopped the cult in their aims for power and control. In late 1994, Aum Shinriko attempted to steal military weapon documents from a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries factory in Hiroshima. Additionally, in December 1994 and January 1995, the cult's member Masa Mitushia synthesized a VX nerve agent, which was used to attack three individuals. One victim was suspected of being a spy by the cult leader Shoko. He was attacked on the street of Osaka with VX gas, resulting in his death 10 days later. Initially, doctors believed he was poisoned with a pesticide, but the truth emerged only after cult members confessed to the attack following their arrest for the 1995 Tokyo subway sarin gas attack. This obviously shows how far the organization was willing to go for their cause. The group's ambition extended to manufacturing assault rifles, 
with an aim to replicate the Soviet Union's AK-74. Despite their efforts, they only managed to complete one rifle. A testimony revealed that Shoko Asahara had desired self-sufficiency in producing these weapons, prompting the smuggling of an AK-74 into Japan for steady and reverse engineering. Police seized the AK-74 components and blueprints from a cult member's vehicle on April 6, 1995, further exposing the group's dangerous intentions. Soon enough, the Doomsday Group would have to start making some sort of ground regarding their twisted agenda. The group's most infamous moment was soon to come, the Tokyo subway sarin attacks. On March 20th, 1995, Aum Shinriko members carried out a coordinated gas attack on five trains in the Tokyo subway system, resulting in the deaths of 13 commuters, with many more seriously injured or affected. The attack was allegedly orchestrated by cult leader Shoko, an attempt to divert police attention from planned raids on cult facilities. However, police responded swiftly with widespread raids across the country. Subsequent investigations uncovered a cache of explosives, chemical weapons, and even a military helicopter at the cult's headquarters near Mount Fuji. While initial reports of biological warfare agents like anthrax and Ebola were exaggerated, significant stockpiles of chemicals capable of producing lethal amounts of sarin were discovered. Further incidents revealed the cult's ongoing threat, including the discovery of a hydrogen cyanide device in a Tokyo station, capable of potentially killing 10,000 commuters, if not for timely intervention. Additionally, undetonated cyanide devices were found in the subway on July 4th, heightening concerns about Aum Shinriko's dangerous capabilities. Attacks like these were very consistent between the years of 1990 and 2000, with the group aiming for various objectives, such as starting an apocalyptic war, collecting Ebola samples for study, or to punish their own members for disloyalty. Aum Shinriko would stop at nothing until their goals were met. But with that being said, Shoko's time was soon to come, and he would be captured by authorities alongside 40 other members on May 16, 1995. Shoko would be found in his meditation chambers and was soon convicted of mass murder terrorism. He was imprisoned for 22 years, and throughout his years in prison, he would continue to bark orders solicit donations, sell materials, and conduct training amongst his members. He would be imprisoned for 22 years before being executed by hanging in 2018. To this day, the group is believed to still be active in recruiting. But with their leader gone, it's unclear who is to be in charge, and numbers seem to be dwindling. Nevertheless, with such a history, as dark as Aung Shinriko's, it's difficult to imagine the cult still being able to function today. But ultimately, people's desires will still reign supreme.